If you have a Bible uh, there in your living room, take it in hand. Let's say it together. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today, my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. As I'm taught the Word of God, my life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. We've been in this series on the truth about money. Two Sunday mornings ago, the Holy Spirit said to me, don't you see it? You are perfectly positioned. You, Faith Christian Center, you are perfectly positioned to go through this crisis because we had spent two years on Wednesday nights teaching on the finished work of Christ and how to walk through this life in the finished work of Christ. Then last year on Sunday mornings, we spent the entire year teaching on how to write your own ticket with God how to operate in the realm of faith. And then uh, I look back, and it had been many years since we had taught about money on Sunday morning. So then in January, we head out in this series, The Truth About Money. And maybe back in January, when I started down this road, people might have thought, there he goes again, teaching about money. But oh my gosh, we get to March, and I'll tell you what, I bet everybody's glad Pastor Gene's teaching about money because we need money every day. Doesn't matter whether we're working or not. Let me tell you what, those people, they want their money. They want their money on the mortgage and the electric bill and the water bill and all of that. Let me tell you what, people, you know, people can be a little bit judgmental and condescending about ministers teaching the people of God about money. But let me tell you what, you got to have money. You got to have money. You got to have money to buy clothes. You got to have money to drive around town looking for toilet paper. You got to have money. So we're in this series, The Truth About Money. Last week, we talked about Hannah. And this morning, we're going to talk about Gideon. Now, actually, the story of Gideon precedes Hannah. And uh, we came across it in our annual Bible reading. That's why the annual Bible reading is a good thing to do, because once a year, you're reminded of all the good things in the Word of God. So we're going to deal with Gideon, and the story of Gideon is in the book of Judges, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Now in this series, we have two uh, foundational scriptures, both out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And in verse 33, Jesus said, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you as well. Now, when we get into the story of Gideon, it's a sad story, and we're going to see something that Dr. Lester Summerall taught me many, many years ago. And that is, he taught me, if a man is not right with his money, that man is not right. And we're going to see that principle play out in the life story of Gideon. The message today, tear down the idols. To live a blessed life, to prosper, to pull ahead, to succeed, to have the hand of God upon your life, you have to tear down the idols in your life. Somebody might say, well, pastor, I don't have any idols. Look, an idol is anything you put ahead of God. In the Old Testament, Israel's constant sin was the sin of idolatry, the worship of foreign gods. An idol is anything you put ahead of God. When we have idols in our lives, God cannot and God will not bless our lives. If you have a Bible, let's go to Judges chapter 6, verse 1. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Uh, they were in a catch-22 cycle. You know, the Lord had warned them. 
the Lord had warned them. Through Moses, the Lord had warned them. Through Joshua, if you intermingle with these people, if you intermarry with these people, if you do not drive these people out of the promised land, they are going to be thistles and thorns in your eyes. And uh, he warned them. Moses warned them. Joshua warned them. Do not copy their practices. Do not worship their gods. Do not do things the way they do things. Almost sounds like America, doesn't it? In other words, just because you go to college, Pastor Sue read that wonderful testimony. That's a brilliant young gal in our church. And uh, she went through her bachelor's with a 4.0, went through her master's with a 4.0. But obviously from the testimony, even though she was taught and trained by ungodly people in the university, she did not pick up their ways. She did not pick up their practices. She did not pick up their idols. So it can be done, but it takes great effort because of course the, the natural thing is to go with the flow in whatever culture we're talking about. But you got to cast down the idols if you want to live your life with the hand of God's blessing and the hand of God's protection upon your life. So the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Now we dealt with this last time, that Hebrew is an ancient language, and so it is impossible reading or translating Hebrew to know whether God is causing something or whether God is permitting something. And the prejudice of the translators always comes through in these English translations of the Word of God. And their theological perspective is God did this and God did that. But you know as well as I do that a lot of the trouble that we experience in life is trouble we got ourselves into. So it could be read this way that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and because they opened a door through their sin and disobedience, God permitted them or God allowed them to be given over into the hands of the Midianites. And you know what I'm telling you is true. If we will live straight, clean, moral lives, we just don't open doors for the devil. But when we get, when we go, when we go, uh, to happy hour and we do like the world and we act like the world and we talk like the world, bad stuff happens. Now you know that's true. So it was happening to them. And so what they would do, it was a cycle. They would disobey God. They would worship these idols. They would act like the peoples around them. And they opened doors. And the peoples around them defeated them and subjugated them and stole from them and basically turned them into slaves. And then they would cry out to God and God in his mercy and God in his grace and God in his kindness would answer them with a judge and a judge would be raised up and a judge would cast off the yoke of slavery from those people around them. And then as soon as they got back into the realm of prosperity, there they'd go again. They would start intermarrying with the pagans and practicing the practices of the pagans and worshiping the false gods of the pagans. You know, again, it almost sounds like America, doesn't it? Because these exact same people that demand your loyalty and demand your fealty, as soon as they get the upper hand over you, then they'll take you to court and sue you and make you do this and make you give up that and make you practice this and make you submit to that. So, thistles in your eyes and thorns in your face. And the answer was there all the time. Moses gave it to the people of God. Joshua gave it to the people of God. You look to God totally, absolutely, and you live for him. And you don't pick up the practices of the pagans around you. Verse 2, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain cliffs, Caves and strongholds. They were living in caves. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. 
It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. And I'll tell you what, I've been teaching and preaching the exact same thing all these years. Don't, don't get in Satan's cycle. I'm telling you, the book of Judges says, every man did what was right in his own eyes. And it was a cycle. They would, they would act like the pagans and, and re worship like the pagans and wor worship idols like the pagans. And the pagans that they were trying to get along with subjugated them, ravaged their land, took their livestock, took their crops, and then they would cry out to God. And God, full of mercy, God, full of grace, God is a God of love. Well, he would lift up a judge and the judge would deliver them. But as soon as they came into a time of peace and prosperity, there they'd go again and repeat the cycle. Look, tear down the idols and break the cycle of poverty and sickness and disease and Satan running you and your family. Break it by tearing down the idols. Idolatry never leads to blessing. Idolatry leads to the curse and being cursed. They were hiding and living in caves. <laughs> you know, some of the super rich in America right now are hiding in caves. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, it's not caves. They've got those uh, bunkers, you know, out in Montana and Wyoming and Idaho. Look, if I live for God, I don't have to live afraid. If I live for God, I don't have to go hide, even if it's in a multi-million dollar bunker. Look, a bunker is a bunker, a cave is a cave, and the people of God don't have to go hide. I believe it. They were hiding and living in caves. Their crops were ruined. They were impoverished, and their land was ravaged. Again, sound familiar? Today, America's idols are falling. When our president bragged about the stock market just two months ago, hard to believe, isn't it? Just two months ago. When our president bragged about the stock market and did not give credit and glory and honor to God, but took the credit for himself, I stood right there on the floor and I said, trouble is coming. That was just two months ago. Today, America's idols are falling. The idol of government as God. The idol of government as our source. The idol of government, of all the stupid things, the idol of government being our healer, our caretaker, and our provider. Let me tell you what. The good thing about them printing all of this money is the next time we come to a crisis, you can use your money as toilet paper. Because they, they're, they're just, they're printing money to where literally it's worthless. I mean, I remember when we could walk down to the corner store and buy a Coke and a Snickers bar for 10 cents. Now, if, if you go anywhere out in public, you can't even buy a soft drink for change. It takes, and, and it's not even a dollar now, it's a dollar and a quarter or a dollar and a half to buy a soft drink. They are printing money to where literally they're making it worthless. I mean, it's like the Weimar Republic in Germany in the 30s. That's what they've done to us. Why, why would you worship something that's bankrupt? Oh man, I'm so glad this morning. My father in heaven, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns the hills, the cattle graze on, on the thousand hills. The gold is his, the silver is his. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So we tear down the idols and don't fall for what this world is peddling. Today, America's idols are falling. Yes, what is going on is a heartbreak. But do you know what is far worse? Since 1973, America has shed the blood of more than 60 million innocent babies in their mother's womb. All these people worried about, you know, infections and deaths and all of that. Look, the earth cries out. That's what God said to Cain after Cain had murdered his brother Abel. God himself said, the earth cries out. 
So the issue is not climate change or global warming. The issue is the earth is moaning and groaning under the burden of sin and the earth is moaning and groaning under the blood of all these innocent babies that have been murdered in their mother's womb. You can call it mother nature, but it's the way I began the message. When you sin, when you put something ahead of God, when you know to do what is right and you refuse to do it, when you act like the pagans and you justify it with science or your social justice warriorism or by whatever means you justify it, you open a door. And it's not God doing anything to America. It's not God doing anything to anybody. Doors get opened. And when doors get opened, the enemy comes in. Now there's nothing you and I can do about it for the world or for our nation, but there is absolutely something we can do about it for our lives and for our families, and that is this, tear down the idols. America's idols are falling. In less than one month, America has been greatly impoverished and our government has increased the national debt by 25% to 27 trillion dollars. Just two months ago, it was $22 trillion. And just two months ago, it was a mathematical impossibility for it to ever be repaid. Well, now it is an impossibility on top of an impossibility. In Judges 6, God's people asked the Lord, why did these things happen? The Lord reminded them of all the good things he had done for them. But then he told them in Judges 6.10, but you have not listened to me. And frankly, a lot of it is the preacher's fault. Because how, how can you listen to God if the preachers in America are too sissified to preach the word of God? So, you know, there's, there's blame to go all over the place. But God said, they cried out to God. They had been impoverished by the Midianites, conquered by the Midianites. They were hiding in their caves. I wonder if they were hunting for toilet paper. And they cried out to God and they said, why have all these things happened to us? And God answered, because you did not listen to me. America's idols are falling. But praise God, God is gracious, God is merciful, God is loving, God is kind. This is, this is a wake-up call. This is a wake-up call. Now the world's not going to get it. They're not ever going to get it. I say that, but you know, just this past week in the Wall Street Journal, there was an article, Will This Crisis Lead to Another Great Awakening? I, I found that interesting. But it's a message and it's a wake-up call to God's own people who have been living haphazardly and casually before the Lord. Look, if it is this dark, if it is this fear and panic stricken now before the rapture, you don't want to miss the rapture. Whatever you got to do to be right with the Lord morally, to be right with the Lord financially, tear down those idols. Because if this world is this messed up before the rapture, what in the world is going to happen to the world after the rapture? I don't know about you. I don't want to experience it. I want to be up in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb, celebrating the salvation of the Lord my God. Can I get an amen? <laughs> remember what God told Cain in Genesis 4, 6, and 7. He said to Cain, you remember... God accepted Abel's offering, but God did not accept Cain's offering. And God said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. You must master it. And we've taught that all these years at Faith Christian Center. Don't let anything get a hold of your life. Porn, alcohol, opioids, heroin, marijuana. Don't let anything rule your life. But what about money? What about money? Man, you got to tear down the idols. 
If you want to go through these days in the prosperity and the protection of the Lord, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I totally, absolutely expect to end December 31st, 2020, ahead financially of where I was December 31st, 2019. Absolutely, without equivocation. And I absolutely expect Faith Christian Center to end December 31st, 2020, ahead of where we were December 31st, 2019. Why? Because we have torn down the idols. We're not acting like the world, thinking like the world, sucking up to the world, and going the world's way. We are 100% all in for God. And that means we live in his prosperity and we live in his protection. You will again see the distinction between those who serve God and those who do not. And on the other side of this, we're going to begin to live in those days. God in his grace and his mercy raised up a judge, a deliverer, a man named Gideon. Gideon didn't think he was qualified. But the angel of the Lord told him in Judges 6, 12, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. <laughs> and that's what I want to say to you this morning. The Lord is with you. If you will stand with God, if you will live right, if you will do right, if you will handle money rightly and not allow money to be an idol, if you'll tear down the idols, then the Lord would say to you this morning, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You know, we may not be warriors strapping on swords or uh, AR-15s or whatever. We may, we may not be going out to war, but we are in a war. We are in a spiritual war. The, the fight we fight is a fight of faith. And Satan is coming after us. You know this. You know this because now... In every public school in America, they've got drag queens teaching America's children. Satan. It doesn't matter. Like the Midianites. It doesn't matter what you give them. It doesn't matter that you act like the Midianites and talk like the Midianites and worship the idols of the Midianites. That's not good enough for the Midianites. They've got to come into your home. They want your children. They want your money. They want your crops. They want your soul. And if you play around with it, you will lose everything. I adjure you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to tear down the idols. Get everything unclean out of your life and out of your home and off your phone and off your computer and off your tablet. Clean out the leaven and live for God. These are not the days to play around with the things of God. Gideon's father was an idol worshiper. So Gideon knew very little about the things of God. Gideon even blamed the troubles of his people on God. But God in his grace and his mercy told Gideon in chapter 6, verse 14, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. In all these years, people have always said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. Wh whatever it is, whatever it is, living right, you know, tithing, whatever it is. I can't, I can't, I can't. God says to you this morning, go in the strength you have. If, if all you've got to tithe is 50 cents, then tithe 50 cents. You've got to start, you've got to go in the strength you have. Gideon asked, how can I? And the Lord told him in verse 16, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites together. The Lord told Gideon in verse 25, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. In other words, before he was able to go out to war, he had to tear down the idols. Baal was the demon god of the Canaanites. Asherah was the female fertility goddess of the Canaanites who were sexually immoral. And America's ch ch churches, I mean, they may not call them Asherah poles, but coast to coast, this is the, this is, look, this is how you increase church attendance, is sexual immorality. I mean, they had it in Greece when Paul was preaching. They had it in the Old Testament in the days of the judges. I'm telling you, 
the world wants to act like everything they're doing is brand new, but there's nothing new under the sun. It's all a repeat. If people would bother to study history, if they'd bother to do the annual Bible reading, they would realize Satan's bag of tricks is not really evolving and changing. It's the same old stuff every generation, generation after generation. But you, I believe, are smart enough to figure it out and tear down the idols and go with God and not go the way of Satan and defeat. Gideon obeyed, he tore down the idols, but he did it at night because he was afraid of the people. The next morning, the men of the town wanted to kill Gideon, but Gideon's father intervened. Are you going to plead Baal's cause? He asked in verse 31, are you trying to save him? If Baal is really a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. And so the people gave Gideon the name Jerob Baal, or he who contends with Baal. In your life, you got to tear down the idols to live a life blessed by God and to live a life protected by God. You got to tear down the idols. But sadly, there is a great irony in Gideon's story. At the beginning of the story, he tore down his father's idols. And he went on to win a great victory. But when there were spoils of war, when money got involved in the mix, Gideon's concern was not an, was not an offering for the Lord. Gideon's concern was what could he keep for himself? The people gave him 43 pounds of gold as a thank you after they won that great victory, the modern equivalent of about a million dollars. And to tell you how messed up he was in his thinking, I mean, if he had taken 43 pounds of gold and had it cast into coin and given a tithe to God and then used the uh, 900,000 modern dollars to be a blessing to his children and to be a blessing to his family, maybe buy a house on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea or whatever. I mean, God wouldn't have thought a thing of it, but he took 43 pounds of gold and he made an idol out of it. I mean, of all the dumb things to possibly do, because you understand if you take 43 pounds of gold and you make an idol out of it, you, you can't send a kid to college. You can't buy a house for one of your children. You, you can't buy, uh, you can't open up a business. I mean, basically you took, 43, you took 43 pounds of gold and made it useless. So he didn't really love his family. But then on top of that, that idol became a snare to Gideon. That idol became a snare to Gideon's family. And that idol became a snare to all of Israel. Judges chapter 8, verse 27, Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Ophrah, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves <coughs> by worshiping it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Let me tell you what, when you act like the Midianites and you talk like the Midianites and, and you repeat what the Midianites say, you are prostituting yourself before an idol, and the Lord doesn't appreciate it. The word of God is true and everything else is a lie. Let me tell you what, if you want to walk in the blessings of the word of God, you have got to stand strong and stand tall and declare the word of God without an apology to a pagan and idol worshiping generation. So the irony of Gideon's story, his father had idols and as a result, Gideon had an idol too. So parents, whatever idols you have in your home, you've got to master them and you've got to tear them down or those exact same idols are going to destroy your children. Whatever the parents do in moderation, the children will do in excess. Any idol you don't tear down will become a snare to you and to your children. Now, let me go ahead and say it. I mean, I know we've, last Sunday we had uh, 5,000 watching us. That was home. So probably 10, 12, 15,000 people watching these Sunday morning broadcasts. There's a church in this county, and they use drinking parties to recruit young people to go to their youth group. 
it is the most despicable thing I have ever come across in 47 years. And I'm talking about an evangelical church, and I'm talking about a full gospel evangelical church. And they use beer to recruit young people to go to their youth activities. Whatever you allow in your life, in moderation, your children are going to operate in that in excess. And yet we've got pastors serving alcohol. Tiff Shuttlesworth told me that now when he goes to full gospel churches to speak, they've got liquor cabinets in the pastor's office <coughs> and they offer him a drink. You know, God bless Tiff. He thought, well, you mean coffee or tea or what? Well, you know, they, they got all this wine and booze and whiskey and all this stuff. Unbelievable. And then we wonder why we are in the throes of this pestilence. You have got to tear down the idols. You have got to run the devil out. You have got to live straight, clean before the Lord, morally and financially. You've got to go all in. And look, we can't save the world. We can't save the culture. We, can't, we don't have that kind of ability or power, but we can save ourselves and we can save our families if we will tear down the idols. Remember, an idol is anything you put ahead of the Lord. Remember what God said to Cain, Genesis 4, 7, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. You must master it. Whatever the idol is, tear it down. Whatever the idol is, master it. Whatever the idol is, overcome it. Get it off your phone. Get it off your computer. Get it off your tablet. Uh, maybe throw those DVDs away. Throw those Blu-rays away. Amen. Disappear it on your iTunes account so you can't see it. Amen. I wish you could delete, but you can't, but you can hide it. So you don't have to see it every time you open up... Uh, iTunes TV or iTunes movies. Get rid of it. Amen. Get it out of your house. If you have any porn in your house, get it out of your... If you have a tithe in your house, get it out of your house. You've got to get what belongs to God out of your house, and you have got to get the devil stuff out of your house, and then you shut the door on the devil. Literally. You shut the door on the devil. He can't get in because he doesn't have a way to get into your life. If he can't get in to your heart and he can't get in to your thinking, he can't get in to your body and he can't get in to your home and he can't get in to your family. You got to tear down the idols and you got to shut the door on the devil and all of his works. Don't let any idol or sin rule your life. Today we face a national crisis in America because of pride, arrogance, a lack of humility, and the shedding of innocent human blood. We learn another valuable lesson in Judges 7. Our Heavenly Father wants all the credit, all the glory, and all the honor. Say it out loud. Our Heavenly Father wants all the credit, all the glory, and all the honor. Why would he want that? Because every good thing we have has come from his hands. And if we don't give him the praise and the credit and the glory, then we have made ourselves or our talents or our abilities or the government or the stock market or whatever it is, our source and an idol in our lives. Our Heavenly Father wants all the credit, all the glory, and all the honor. Don't, <laughs> don't do what we saw in January. A man took credit for the stock market. And in 60 days, all the gains disappeared. Whatever you take credit on will disappear. Whatever you don't tithe on will disappear. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go with God, live your life God's way, and shut the door on the devil and all of his devices. In Judges 7, Gideon set out with his army of 32,000 men, but God wanted the credit. So 
First, God reduced the number of Gideon's army by about 70%. 22,000 men were sent home, and Gideon went on with 10,000 men. But God said it was still too many. So God reduced the number of men from 10,000 all the way down to 300. When Gideon snuck into the enemy's camp that night, the Bible says the enemy were as thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. 300 men. <laughs> oh, let me tell you. You might say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm facing in my business, or, or you don't know what I'm facing in my finances. You serve the God who relishes in showing out against impossible odds and circumstances. God whittled Gideon's army all the way down from 32,000 to 300 because God wanted to show out. And I'm telling you, on March 29, 2020, brothers and sisters in the Lord, if you'll tear down those idols and you'll run the devil out of your house and, and shut all that nonsense down, God wants to show himself strong in your house against impossible odds. Let God do his thing. Because when God does his thing, hallelujah, then you have a genuine bona fide miracle and then be careful to give him all the credit, the glory, and the honor. With just 300 men, God gave Gideon a great victory. You might say, well, how is that even possible? How could 300 men uh, win a military victory against so many that could not even be counted? Well, that wasn't very hard. What the Lord did is he had the Midianites turn on each other and kill each other. So problem solved. Gideon followed the Lord's instructions. He did what God said to do. If we're going to pull ahead, if we're going to prosper, if we're going to succeed, we have a part to play. You can't just sit back and expect the Lord to do everything. The Lord's not going to do it. You've got to do your part. And as you go, as you do your part, as you obey God, God will bless everything you put your hand to. When we do our part and take action, when we do our part and take action on the Word of God, God will give us victory every time. This is another important lesson in Gideon's life. God wants all the credit. God wants all the honor. God wants all the glory. And when we take it for ourselves, it's almost like holding the tithe back. You know, when we take it for ourselves, we open a door. God is not going to do something to us, but we open a door. The devil marches right in, and he wreaks havoc in our lives. Friend, we can't do it in our own strength anyway. If we could do it in our own strength and our own ability, I guess then we could take the credit. But we, we can't do it in our own strength anyway. Look, those of you that have been a part of Faith Christian Center, you have faith in what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not the Word of God, but you have faith in what I'm saying. There, there's no doubt in your mind when we get to December 31st, 2020, I'll be further ahead than I was December 31st, 2019. And the same thing will be true of Faith Christian Center. You have faith in what I'm saying. But look, if your partner's together with us, well, why don't you get in on that? And you might say, well, I don't see how it's possible. Well, the Lord will give you ideas. And basically all we're talking about is making as much money in nine months as you made in 12. You could stretch your faith for that, can't you? Can't you stretch your faith for that? Can't you believe God for that, that you can make as much money in nine months as you normally would in 12? I mean, what is that, about a 25% boost in those, those nine months? You can believe God for that. Amen. You know, instead of believing like some of these governors of these liberal states, everybody's going to get it, why don't we believe something positive? Why don't we believe that the God of Gideon can lead us into victory? Why can't we believe the God of Gideon can lead us into success. Why can't we believe, like in Gideon's day, that not one of those 300 men fell in battle? Why can't we set our faith on what we want and not be like this panic-stricken and fear-foaming generation and go around talking about what we fear and uh, forecasting worst-case scenarios and all of that? I, I tell you what, 
Maybe we ought to just not read the news or watch the news because it's all about fear and panic, but the Word of God is all about faith. Say it out loud. My God can deliver me from this pestilence, and my God can prosper me in 2020 no matter what the world is going through. Amen. If we could do it on our own, maybe we could take the credit, but we can't do it on our own. I'm telling you, God wants to show himself strong in your life, in your family, in your business. God wants to show himself strong at Faith Christian Center in 2020. Amen. Fearlessly, we soldier on. Fearlessly, we declare the word of God. Fearlessly, we say what we want and not what we fear, primarily because we don't fear anything. Hallelujah. Fearlessly, we believe the word of our God. And when we do that, his hand is upon us, his hand of blessing, and his hand of protection. God wants us to look to him as our source. God wants us to look to him as our supply. God wants us to look to him as our provider. God wants us to look to him as our protection. Not the government, not Wall Street, not the Fed, not uh, the financial system. God wants to, us to look to him as our source. His, his, he wants us to look to him as our supply. He wants us to look to him as our provider and our protection. We can't do it in our own strength or in our own ability, but we can do it with the help of God. We can succeed with the help of God. We can win with the help of God. We can prevail and overcome with the help of God. You can reach your goals with the help of God. Pastor, you can't be serious. You know, I, when I got to uh, January, I had my list, I had my confessions, and I was believing God for this and believing God for that. You can still reach those goals. Amen. I have not put one goal on the shelf. Amen. Whatever, whatever I've missed out on in uh, March or April, God will make it up to me. Amen. I believe that. My God is able. My God is now that now that that 43 pound gold God that Gideon made now now that God wasn't able and Baal he wasn't able and that sexually immoral uh, God Asherah she's not able but the living God the Almighty God El Shaddai he's able Hallelujah and if you will set your faith on Him and if you will tear down the idols and get that junk out of your home that doesn't belong in your home and get the tithe out of your house that doesn't belong in your house, God, God will show himself strong in your life. God will protect you and God will bless you. And whatever you do without, I'm not saying you might not do without something right here in March or April. Whatever you do without, God will make it up to you and you will pull ahead and you will prosper and you will flourish in the later months of 2020 to make up the gap. Yeah, even if you can't believe it, believe it because I said it and God will make it come to pass in your life. Even if you get to December 31st and you write me an email and say, Pastor, I can't believe it, but God did what you said, that's all right. But just stay with the word and if you can't believe it, just believe it because I said it, God will make it up to you. And I'm telling you, we're going to pull ahead in 2020 to just rub the devil's nose in it. Satan's not in charge of a thing at Faith Christian Center. Satan's not in charge of my life. Satan's not in charge of my body. Satan's not in charge of my money. Satan's not in charge of my business. Satan's not in charge of Faith Christian Center. Satan's not in charge of St. Paul's Preparatory Academy. We don't give him an inch. Neither give place to the devil. The Greek word there is topos, from which we get our, our word topography. Don't give the devil any place in your life, not even in your thought life. So you can do it. You can reach your goals in 2020 with the help of God. You can beat the odds in 2020 with the help of God. No matter what you may be facing right now, you can make a comeback with the help of God. You can see every dream and every vision and every goal you had for 2020 come to pass in 2020. We're not delaying anything. We're not putting any of it off. We're not, we're not putting any of it on the shelf. We are pressing on. We are soldiering on in faith. Never forget Zechariah 4, 6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You can do things by the anointing of God. You cannot do any other, 
You cannot do any other way. And then daily confess Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So tear down the idols and look to God as your source and supply. Give all the credit, the glory, and the honor to God. And what happens when you do that? The people went from being impoverished in their land and ravaged in their land to peace and prosperity. Judges 8.28 says during Gideon's lifetime, the land enjoyed peace for 40 years. And you can do that. You can do that in your life. You can have peace and prosperity in your home and in your family. And you can see every dream and every vision you had in January for 2020 come to pass in 2020. We believe God. We don't believe the world. We believe God. We're not, we're not living like the Midianites and the Canaanites and all that, the Jebusites and all that. No, we live for God. We believe what God has said. We believe what God has said about our life. And that's it. That's it. And that's what comes out of our mouth. And we, we, we batten down the hatches on our mind and we just refuse to think thoughts contrary to the word of God. And we refuse to say what the world is saying. Hallelujah. And I want you to see it. I want you to see it. There's a class in this country. It's not just the media, but there's a class in this country. And they didn't want the president to stop the flights from China, even though now everybody says that could have been done a little sooner. They didn't want the president to stop the flights from Europe, even though now everybody says that could have been done a little sooner. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I want you to see it. Open up your eyes. I want you to see it. They're, these liberal governors, they're confessing as the elected leaders of their state that everybody in their state's going to get it. Oh my gosh, no wonder people in New York City are fleeing New York City. No wonder people in New York State are fleeing New York State. Of course they want to get out from under a governor who says everybody's going to get it. I want you to see it. The world is believing they'll get it. The world is confessing they'll get it. The world is acting like they'll get it. And here at Faith Christian Center, we're believing it has nothing to do with us. We're confessing it has nothing to do with us. And we're acting like it has nothing to do with us. And you watch, you watch, you hide and watch. It'll pass right on by Gene Lingerfelt. It'll pass right on by Gene Lingerfelt's family. It'll pass right on by the Faith Christian Center family. It'll pass right on by the St. Paul's Preparatory Academy family. You watch, you watch, you watch. What we say comes to pass because God has given us this right to speak and to prophesy over our own lives. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be done unto you. So tear the idols down. Tear the idols down. And if you've made God your money, that's what this is about. Frankly, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. Money, 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 money. Kill babies, kill babies, kill babies. Money, 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 money. Kill babies, kill babies, kill babies. Money, 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 money. Kill babies, kill babies, kill babies. That's what this is about. And we need to wake up. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. And we need to live for God. 